we put this barn up in 1963. It was moved from a location about 50 mi 15 or so miles away from here uh, on the back of a pickup truck by a young farmer from Hancock, Richard Babcock, who went on to uh, put up barns in Wolf Trap and other places uh, for the Rockefellers, one thing or another. This was his first building from scratch. And it's a standard, basically a standard New England hay barn. The size is about uh, 30, I think it's, it's 30 feet by 40 feet long, uh, approximately 40 feet high. We, we cut two feet off the height of it because the stalls uh, on the north side, which would have uh, would have, which became bedrooms, would have been too high. Uh, other than that, it's the it's the basic beams, the basic structure is all right there. Uh, was taken down, as I say, put on the back of a, a pickup truck and uh, brought here, and Babcock, uh, with a couple of helpers, put this all back up again. These old New England barns, uh, it was quite usual to borrow plank and, uh, and borrow uh, the beams from other barns. <clears throat> and Mar uh, this particular barn is full of it. You can look up and you can see mortises in the middle of uh, beams. Well, that, they were being used for some other barn. And you find that throughout this barn. The oldest uh, of them, Babcock said, would be uh, definitely 18th century. The big beams that go across all the way through that tie in the hay door, the hay doors, you can still see the framing for the hay door on the uh, west side of the barn. Uh, the big cross beams are, are, are undoubtedly 18th century, and we had to cut, you see, in order to make room for me to go into the studio, <coughs> we had to cut the beam, and that caused things to spring out a bit, so that's why you see some steel uh, drawing supports to draw <coughs> draw the, the barns in, uh, beams in. Well, that's a cultivator, and it looks very much like an old timer. It came from the neighbor down the way, and I don't know uh, the background of it, but I, I do know that uh, this is a is a, uh, a cultivator that would have been hooked up to a horse. I painted a, a beautiful one uh, that he had that was mule drawn uh, cultivator. This one, <coughs> the, that, the one I first painted, he had restored. This one is as you see it, but those uh, handles have been out there uh, working in the field. That's a post hole digger over there. And these old tools, I got interested in because uh, often they are handmade. Uh, I look at this this cultivator over here, and it, it, it looks as though it were handmade and not machine made. Uh, it isn't mass produced. Uh, those old farmers would make the handles themselves. They knew uh, that you didn't use hickory for an axe handle. You used something that was flexible like uh, ash. They knew what the different woods were, do you see? And uh, like the barn itself, uh, they, they, they weren't fancy. You look at these hand-hewn beams, and if you see any marks of the ads in them, the guy wasn't skillful. The guys that were really skillful would have it as smooth as a, as a baby's bottom. But uh, people, made things. They had blacksmiths. Clarence uh, Martin was a blacksmith uh, here in Sheffield. His, his son ran a backhoe and dug the hole, uh, holes where we, where we put the, uh, our apple trees out in the orchard. But Clarence, uh, everybody said he made the horseshoes. He could do anything with a horse. I mean, use a horse for work? That's uh, long gone now. In, the, in a barn next to where I grew up in Pittsfield on 64 South Mountain Road, uh, old man Peck had had horses, work horses, and uh, he'd drive them out every day and go uptown with a wagon to, to uh, Pittsfield and collect uh, 
leftovers from the various stores and bring them back to feed the pigs. It was a working farm. So these old tools, uh, people don't know what they're used for, but you see Floyd Woodbank did, and he collected them. You can, you can see uh, some of the tools at the Shaker Museum in Hancock, uh, some of those old tools. Uh, they're just extraordinarily beautiful and purposeful. That is the woodpecker calling for his mate and drilling on the drain outside. Life in the country. <laughs>